Okay, so Belbin team roles. Well, the concept for the team roles started when Dr. Meredith Belbin was working with a group of business managers and executives. This was uh, in the 1970s at a place called Henley Management College in Oxfordshire in England. And he became interested in the makeup of teams. In particular, what he wanted to know was what makes a winning team. So he did some psychometrics, he put them into teams, he got them playing a kind of supercharged monopoly. And one of the things he discovered early was that a successful team needs a range of abilities. You already know this, you don't expect your opening bowler to also open the batting. Likewise, you don't think that because somebody's a champion cyclist, they'll automatically be great at the shot put. Belbin put it this way, he said, a team of specialists will always beat a team of all-rounders. As time progressed, different clusters of behaviour were identified as underlying the success of the teams, and Belvin called a team role a tendency to behave, contribute, and interrelate with others in a particular way. Now, it's important to remember that Belvin is about working on strengths. It, you don't tell the duck you're a great swimmer, but your running's terrible, so we'll work on that. No, you try and maximise the duck's value as a swimmer. So, Belvin identified nine team roles that underlie successful team composition and you can think of them in groups of three so the first group are the thinking oriented roles now the first role these people are highly creative and imaginative they're good at solving problems in unconventional kinds of ways okay and Belvin called these people plants now the second group uh, these people are logical they can weigh up options they can make impartial judgments that aren't based on emotions, yeah? These are the kind of people who can give you real advice. Uh, and Belvin called these people monitor evaluators. The last in the first group, well, these people just have detailed knowledge of a specific key area. It might be nuclear physics, it might be the chemical composition of donuts. These are the specialists. Okay, so the second group of roles are the people oriented roles and the first of these uh, well this is the person who can manage the team they can delegate the work they can focus on the team's objectives and this is the coordinator the second group well these people are the heart and soul of the team they're able to use their versatility to give assistance to all team members they're the team worker the last in this little uh, group uh, well these people uh, know the market They've got inside knowledge of the opposition. They connect the team's ideas to the world. These are the resource investigators. Now the final trio are the action-oriented roles. And the first of these roles is the, the driver, the leader. Uh, Belbin calls this role uh, the shaper. Shapers have the drive to keep the team moving forward and focused. The second group are the doers. These are the people who plan practical strategies and carry them out efficiently. They actually make the product. These are the implementers. The final role, and it's most effective near the end of the task, which is when they can polish, scrutinise for errors, ensure a high standard of quality control. These are the completer finishers. So there are the nine roles. Uh, does this mean that every successful team needs nine members? Well, no. Some roles are shared or one individual takes on more than one. The roles have specific strengths and associated problem areas, but really they're a tool for managing yourself and the other members of your team. It encourages awareness, integration and efficiency. It promotes a team of specialists, which is a winning team.